College football is celebrating 150 years. A great tradition from that comes homecoming weekend. Morgan State Bear alumni are back home on campus for a weekend of events, parades, parties, and of course, football. The football tradition at Morgan State is a proud one, but with five different head coaches in the last seven seasons, the Bears, they need a revival. The alumni hopes the revival starts today on homecoming weekend against Delaware State. Good afternoon and welcome to Hughes Stadium on the campus of Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland. Two teams looking for their first MEAC conference win of the season. The 1-4 Hornets of Delaware State in town to face the 0-5 Bears of Morgan State. It's the MEAC Digital Network broadcast on ESPN3. Hi everybody, great to see you again this week. I'm Phil Shader alongside my partner, the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt. And both these teams feel that this is their best chance to get a conference win. Delaware State last year played two, sometimes three quarterbacks. Not the case this year. They believe they found their guy in true freshman Tyleek Bathia. It's tough to play that position as a true freshman because of the amount of information you have to learn and just getting acclimated to college football. So for Bathia to do that as a true freshman, 6'5", 200 from Long Island, speaks volumes of what he brings to the table. Morgan State's defense hopes it'll be a long day for the freshman quarterback. Bears linebacker Rico Kennedy coming off a 15-tackle game, Emory, in his home state of Florida last week. He's your classic sideline-to-sideline -side guy, great person off the field, and even better football player when it gets in between the white lines. On offense, the Bears, well, they have shown the last few weeks that they can run the football. Joshua Chase went over 100 yards last week. Yeah, the D.C. native, I'm a big fan of what he brings to the table. He runs behind his pads. He has great balance. He does a great job of catching the football, great burst. Not surprised he's getting the start today. He should help spearhead this ground game. Emory, an evenly matched game between these two teams should be a good one this afternoon. Absolutely. It's homecoming weekend. Should be a fantastic matchup in the MEAC. Can the Bears give Tyrone Wheatley his first win? The Hornets looking to snap a 30-game road losing streak. It's Delaware State and Morgan State. Kickoff is next on the MEAC Digital Network broadcast on ESPN3. top and bottom of your screen snap was over his head Moser running for his life here comes the pressure he's still on his feet Moser ends up firing the ball downfield and it's oh, caught no. at the 20 yard line Reese Bender makes the catch wow Phil, ben, Moser, ben Moser extended that play and extended that play and then just threw it up after the snap over his head and Reese Bender makes the catch. Did I just see wow. what I think I saw, <laughs> what my eyes just said, I just saw, oh. what a catch. Way to go up and make a play. Now, that. Defensive players in the entire MEAC. Harris throwing, looking. Has the catch down to the one yard line. What a great grab, but they're gonna say no. Gravette was not in bounds. Gravette incomplete as he caught the football, but wasn't able to stay in. Let's get another look at it. You see, he was bobbling that football, but I thought he came down in bounds. Yeah, I like one foot. Let's get a look at this right play. There. Right That's there. That's a catch. Let's see what it looked like. And they're going to stop and take a look at it because that was a great, great grab. This last 5 16 is going to be fun. Moser in for the touchdown, and it's a 22 17 game. In this series, they've won eight of the last 11 since 2006. Harris goes to the end zone. Bailey's wide open. Touchdown, Morgan State. Oh, how do you leave 13 that open? And how about a chest bump for the Bear by Bailey? That's an excellent job by Harris. Again, starting to settle in. What happened? They brought that low crosser underneath that sucked that safety in and allowed Menashe Bailey to streak right down the seam. And Harris put a dart on him for the touchdown. Just an outstanding play by Bailey. Even better play by Harris, who has started to play really well in the back half of this game. Let's take a look at how they got there with our first half highlights. Morgan State. Harris throws the interception. It was Joseph Stuckey with the interception. And then Rico Kennedy with an interception in the long return for the Morgan State Bears. And that led to Morgan State getting on the board with a Joshua Chase touchdown on a four-play 20-yard drive. And this big catch by Gervet down to the two-yard line. And then in for the score. Morgan State 
Takes care of that with the Joshua Chase touchdown. Back comes a &T. Carter to Zachary Leslie for the 10-yard score. It was 10-10. And then Harris, 27 yards to Bailey for the touchdown. The extra point was blocked, and that's where we are at the half. Morgan State leads it 16-10. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN. With the lead and our LECOM Student Athlete of the Week, women's soccer for Bloomsburg University, Lauren Holkey, the junior from Blackwood, New Jersey. Quarter. Clarion Holiday Inn Express and Suites is an outstanding new hotel just off exit 62, Interstate 80 in Clarion. Free high speed internet, full breakfast buffet, indoor pool, fitness center, and more. Call and make a reservation. The Clarion Inn Express, your sports fever television headquarters. Don't forget, coming up next week, our PSAC College Football Game of the Week of the Sports Fever Television Network. We'll get a look at the number nine team in Division II College Football, Slippery Rock. The Rock taking on the Clarion Golden Eagles next week, 1 o'clock on the Sports Fever Television Network, brought to you by Butler County Community College. And let's take a look at this. This year, how about Jake Cirillo? An upset of a Division I team. They beat Wagner to start the season 24-14. The last time that happened was in 1994. They went down to Easton, Pennsylvania and beat Lafayette 31-14. And who was the quarterback? The guy there on your screen, not number seven, the other guy. That is James Franklin. And quarterbacks continue to get rewarded for bad throws. That was a bad throw where the ball Hit him in the back, but you have to turn around if you're the defender, because if he turns around, that ball hits him in the esophagus. That's it was serious. right there thrown Defense to where it should be. Number four, 15 yards, automatic, first down. So they were looking for Leslie. That this North Carolina A&T is in Baltimore with revenge on their minds. The Bears coming off being shut out at Norfolk State last week, looking for a high note to a tough first season under Tyrone Wheatley. Another upset of the Aggies would be something for the Bears to hang their hats on for the season. Can they do it again? Find out next. NCAA Division II college football in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. A beautiful fall Saturday in the Pocono Mountains. A great day for homecoming at Eiler Martin Stadium in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. East Division rivals, the 1-5 Huskies of Bloomsburg, make the 75-mile trip on Interstate 80 to face the 5-1 East Stroudsburg Warriors. It's the PSAC College Football Game of the Week on the Sports Fever Television Network.